Adam Wilkinson, CEO of Jade Bloom, here today to talk about how to spot fake essential oils. Now, if you're already asking, what is an essential oil? Go back and watch the video I created last week. So the first question today we should be asking is, what is a fake essential oil and why should I care as long as it smells the same, right? Well, today I want you to know you should care because your health depends on it. Get some rest. If you haven't got your health, you haven't got anything. Another word you may have heard used regarding an oil that is less than 100% pure is an adulterated oil. An adulterated oil actually falls into a different category since its chemical fingerprint may look identical to a pure oil and may even provide some of the same healing benefits. Now, adulterated oils are most often purposefully engineered by talented chemists with the intent to deceive sophisticated oil users and even perhaps other chemists. Why would someone produce an adulterated essential oil? Well, it actually all comes down to the economics and greed. If a dishonest chemist thinks that they can get away with selling an adulterated oil, then they can stand to make a lot of money. Let me give you an example. Birch essential oil is produced by distilling the wood from the birch tree. About 90% of the essential oil consists of a single chemical constituent called methyl salicylate. This is the main active chemical in birch essential oil that provides the pain relief properties when applied to sore muscles and joints. In fact, it's actually the same ingredient that's in Bengay and Icy Hot. Methyl salicylate can be synthetically created for five to ten dollars per pound, but to create the same amount from steam distilling a birch tree growing in nature can cost 15 to 20 times as much as that. So the huge cost discrepancy provides tremendous incentive for dishonest chemists to recreate 100% pure birch essential oil that was never in fact derived from nature. Okay, for now let's set aside the discussion on adulterated essential oils and let me go back to my original question. Why should I care about using a fake oil? Remember, we're talking about these being in different categories. We have fake oils, adulterated oils, and 100% pure essential oils. If the only reason that you use essential oils are for the smell, then it's possible that you don't care. But if all you care about is how something smells, then there are plenty of synthetically created aromas and fragrances that are much cheaper than fake oils being passed off as pure essential oils. If, however, you are interested in essential oils for their primary purpose in providing healing for your body, then nothing less than 100% pure essential oil will suffice. So with that being said, let's take a look at a few tricks in spotting a fake oil. Let's start with how it smells. If you're familiar with how a certain essential oil should smell, or if you have a bottle of pure essential oil from a trusted company, you can simply do an odor comparison test. The good fakes will be hard to detect, but there are many blatantly fake oils on the market that you will immediately spot with this method. The very first ultrasonic diffuser I purchased came with a free bottle of lavender essential oil. Obviously, I was excited about the unexpected freebie. The label on the bottle clearly stated that it was 100% pure lavender essential oil. But whatever was actually in the bottle smelled nothing like lavender and something closer to turpentine. It was a blatant fake, which was probably why it was free, and I certainly didn't take them up on their offer to buy additional oils. Moving on, we can look at the feel of an essential oil and the viscosity. Typically, it should have a very thin consistency, should evaporate fairly quickly. Here's an example. This is uh, cashmere lavender, 100% uh, pure essential oil from Jade Bloom, but you can see that it's almost like water, looks like water, very thin, moves like water. Not typical uh, of what you consider something to be oily. There's nothing oily about it at all. Now, some essential oils do have heavier base notes and some pure absolute oils uh, can actually be very thick. But for the most part, essential oils that are 100% pure are simply chemicals. They're volatile compounds. They they won't be oily or greasy, and price can also be a great indicator on identifying fake essential oils. There are actually many great, uh, reputable essential oil companies that sell 100% pure essential oils, but there's even more that are trying to pass off fake oils as real oils. Um, if you see a very, very aggressive pricing strategy, it's most likely a dead giveaway you're dealing with a fake. 
Uh, Jade Bloom is very aggressive with our pricing strategy, but let me just give you an example. 10 milliliters of our cashmere lavender, we sell for $10. And for our, our um, cost of production, that's actually a, a very aggressive price. But you can go on Amazon and you can buy four ounces of lavender for about $20. That's 12 times as much as that little bottle I just showed you for twice the price. And a lot of those even have four and five star, thousands of four and five star reviews. So it must be pure oil, right? Wrong. In fact, a lot of those Amazon oils have been tested and retested by reputable chemists over the years. And what they are actually selling is synthetic fragrances. They are not pure essential oils. So circling back to our original question, if you're only interested in oils for the smell, then perhaps a fake oil brand may be a great route. If you do choose fake oils or synthetic fragrances, that's just fine as long as you understand that that's what you're getting. But I would not put those oils on your body or in your body. Let's move on to the bottled label. Many companies that aren't trying to pass their fragrance oil off as pure essential oil, they will not put the words 100% pure oil on the bottle. It's important to know what position the company takes on the product that they're, they're selling. So if they don't label it as pure, then it's likely not pure. It's probably fake slash synthetic oil. Also, I don't recommend buying any oil that doesn't indicate that the oil has been GCMS tested and includes a specific batch number to reference those purity reports. You should be getting access to the purity reports on the oils you're buying. Other things you want to see on the label are the uh, scientific name of the plant that they used in the steam distillation process, uh, as well as the country of origin of where that plant came from. Now these tips can be helpful in spotting fake essential oils, but they're almost completely worthless when dealing with an adulterated oil, like in my previous example with the birch. Because of the level of sophistication that I've seen deceitful chemists employ today, you need, you need to be sure that your essential oils are being tested by a reputable lab that are actually trained on catching adulteration. At Jade Bloom, we put our oils through a barrage of testing from a third-party lab, and we actually publish those batch-specific test results to each page on our website. Additionally, every bottle we manufacture also gets a batch number, so you can easily type that number in on our website to get batch-specific testing. We created a video that gives a great overview on GCMS testing, which stands for Gas Chromatography mass spectrometry. You don't need to remember that, but you should be familiar with the acronym GCMS, which refers to two separate tests that identify the compounds in an essential oil. We really want you to understand this stuff, so we actually created a simple animation and we included it in the GCMS explanation video. It'll help you understand how the process works and maybe even help you catch adulteration in oils that you might purchase in the future. Simply click the link in the description below to learn about GCMS testing now. So long.